everybody. Welcome to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know you will find inspiring, interesting, and so engaging. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. It, y'all, you know, I always try to find fun and interesting things to talk about on here. So my next guest, her name is Shabarbara Best Everett. I know it's long, but it's super cool. She has written, I'm going out there. She has written like 17,000 books, okay? And so we're going to talk to her a little bit about her books. We're going to talk about how she got started and how she got published. So everybody, welcome my friend, Shabarba. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, thank you so much for being here. So first of all, let's get this together. I know I said 1,700 books. How many books have you published, girl? <laughs> I've written 40 books and I'm about to publish my 23rd next month. Wow. So there are those of us who have published one book. <laughs> and so you are on number 23. First of all, how did you get started writing books? And tell us a little bit about the books that you write. Um, I write Christian poetry, inspirational poetry. Um, I write children's books, cookbooks. Um, I've heard about my life. I write devotionals. The book that's coming out next is called From Single Mom to Army Mom. And that's talking about my life and my son's life and the obstacles we went through to get to where we are now. Mm, yeah, and that, that's kind of crazy when you think about it. So how did you get started? Did you wake up one day and say, today <laughs> I'm going to be an author and I'm going to write you know, 40 books and have 23 of them published? <laughs> No, in college, um, I've always loved poetry, but um, I really didn't know how to write poetry, but I tried it one day and God just gave it to me. And so I started writing it to vent because I was always the counselor for everyone. So people came with me with their issues, but I didn't have anyone to vent to. So that was my way of venting and it just so happened to rhyme. And so um, every now and then I would share my poetry with my friends. And people kept telling me over and over and over, you need to write a book. Well, it took me about 13 years to write my first book. <laughs> okay. um, well, I wrote it. It took me about 13 years to publish it. And after that, I wrote the first children's book when I was in El Paso, Texas. And I wrote, um, it's called, Will You Be My Friend? Mm -hmm. And Will You Be My Friend? It's about um, children having to move around a lot, military children, foster children, they're having to move around a lot and start over and find a new friend. Mm -hmm. My son was going through that because it was time for us to move from El Paso and he did not want to leave because he didn't want to leave his friends. Even though he found friends very quickly, it was still a struggle for him. And I knew other children were going through the same thing, uh, mostly foster children and military children so having to move around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote it for my son, but, and, but I also knew that other children were going through the same thing. That's true. It's so funny because I'm a military kid. A lot of my audience knows. So we moved around a whole lot and I don't remember books like that. But what I do remember is I remember the one of the last times that we moved, my dad was like, get in the car, we're moving again. And I remember I <laughs> cried and cried and cried. And I remember telling him, you are ruining my life. <laughs> I must've been all grown up at 10 or 11 years old but yeah. you know and same thing as military kids we do you just make friends as you go but they're quick friendships because mm -hmm. you know you're going to maybe leaving in a little bit yeah. I like what you said too about foster kids now you have a special place in your heart for the foster care system tell us a little bit about that I'm a therapeutic foster parent I've been doing it for five and a half years and I have children with different issues, whether it's mental or physical, whatever the issue is. Um, and I've had over 30 children so far because I've always wanted to be a foster parent, but because I'll, I knew that some children just needed love and their basic needs. And I had that. And so um, on my 40th birthday, my husband bought me um, a big house because I wanted to have foster children. And so <laughs> now like I was going to college, Mm -hmm. um, so we really didn't need a, a big house, but I wanted to have foster children. We were finally in one place. He was retiring. We didn't have to go anywhere else. And I could finally do what I've been wanting to do. And I've been doing it for now for five and a half years. And I've had over 30 children. And 
even if they're here for a short time, you know, I know to pray for them when they leave. Yeah. Some are here longer. I've had the longest one I've had so far is four years. Wow. But it's heartbreaking when they leave. I couldn't, I don't know if I could handle that emotional, emotionally, because that would, that would just tear me up. How many kids did you have in your home at one time? I only take three because okay. I want them to have enough attention because mm-hmm. a lot of children have are autistic. Um, they may have ODD. Mm-hmm. They may have um, physical needs. Mm-hmm. Like I've had a child that their parents almost beat them to death. Oh, wow. So they had to go through a lot of different therapies. They have to see a lot of specialists. So I have to have the time to be able to do all those things for them. Yeah. Wow. That is just such a gift because not everyone can do it. And then those that can may not. So thank you so much for what it is that you do. You You are also, my friend, a three-time cancer survivor. Yes. Do y'all see what I'm talking about? (laughs) This woman is everything, everything. And she still has this rock star smile. You know, and it makes (laughs) me think how many of us go through things, you know, one thing, can't find the remote and we're pretty well done for the day. But (laughs) yeah, three-time cancer survivor. Shabarba, tell us about that. Um, I found out um, through doing a self-breast exam in the shower my junior year in college, uh, found a lump. And went to the campus clinic. Um, and that's a whole story in itself because I, <laughs> the doctor was really rude to me. Wow. But um, I found out I, I had cancer, mm-hmm. um, breast cancer, at 21 years old. Wow. And then after I had my son Malachi, 23, I had a lot of complications after being in labor with him for 32 hours. Woo. Woo. Yeah, and he was already <laughs> late. <laughs> Bruh, it's time to go. (laughs) It was time to go. But um, I had some complications with him and um, had to be in the hospital for a week, but still having more complications, found out I had cervical cancer. And that was at 23. And I went in for a routine mammogram at 36 and Mm -hmm. found I had breast cancer again. So the breast cancers were 15 years apart. So I wasn't expecting it, but -hmm. because I keep a check on myself every year, I do mm-hmm. my annual exams. I do my mammograms and pap smears and everything. And I encourage other people to do the same thing. And another thing, I found out my family's health history early. And I mm-hmm. encourage people to do that also because even though you could be the only one in your family with cancer, but it could be some other family members with cancer. Mm-hmm. And a lot of Black families don't talk about you know, their different illnesses, right. or if someone passed away, you don't ask, okay, what happened to them? I mm-hmm. ask, mm-hmm. do I need to check that out for myself? Right. That's <laughs> and smart. that's how I was able to find out early with all of my cancers were found early because mm-hmm. I did that. Yeah, that is wonderful. We're so glad that you're here because without you, we wouldn't have 1700 of your books. <laughs> <laughs> so- <laughs> and as if there were not, at least that was not enough. Tell me about your cookbook, my friend. My Uh, gosh, I am so inadequate right now. Just need you to know. (laughs) Well, I, um, I've been cooking. My whole family can cook. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, when I was in college, I would experiment on my friends. (laughs) Not cooking. So, but I would cook different things to see. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I would cook different things to see if they liked it. And, it got, I got better <laughs> trying, mm-hmm. trying different things with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I love cooking and mm-hmm. it's a stress reliever and I love feeding people. I love making people happy. Mm-hmm. So um, I've been able to even teach cooking classes, wow. even here in Savannah, for the city of Savannah, people learn skills. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the skills they learn is how to cook. And yeah. I had people in there as young as 19, as old as 70, All right. that is <laughs> trying awesome. to learn how to cook. And um, but I mainly did it because when I owned daycares, mm-hmm. my babies would eat my food, but they weren't eating their parents' food. Ooh. And they would ask me, what are you doing with your food? Why are they eating it? Because they would tell me, oh, they're picky. They don't eat this. They don't eat right. that. I'm like, okay. And <laughs> they would eat everything. And then trying to get them out, you know, like, you yeah. have to go home now. Like, no, I'm eating oh, here. <laughs> oh, so what I a compliment. <laughs> So I did it um, mostly to help my parents out. And mm-hmm. because again, we moved a lot. Mm-hmm. So 
you know, when it was time for me to leave, I would get, I'm going with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, I was going to cook for you, you know? And yeah. so um, also I have a, a line of barbecue sauces and seasonings. Okay. And that was another thing when they asked me, what are you putting in your food? I'm like, I put a little this, a little that. I'm from North Carolina, a little dab of this, a little right. <laughs> pinch of that. And so I came up with different um, seasonings mm -hmm. um, so they can know what to put in their food. Wow. So it's kind of like a cheat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm down for a cheat code when it comes to cooking. Y'all, as you can tell, this woman has so much going on. She's got so much inspiration and spirit and not to mention that absolutely beautiful <laughs> smile. Oh, but don't worry, you. we have all of her contact information in the description below to include her website. You have to go to her website because there's everything in there that you're going <laughs> to love. But don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also give us a thumbs up because you know we want want to hear from you. So Shababra, my friend, before I let you go, <laughs> we have to play our game. Okay. Okay. So the game's pretty simple. It's called this or that. And I'm just going to give you the choice of two things and you off the top of your head, you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready okay. to play? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Flowers or plants? Flowers. Hotel or tent? Hotel. Me too, girl, right? Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. Practical joker or I don't play like that? <laughs> I don't play like that. <laughs> I don't even, I don't like practical jokes. I think they're mean. <laughs> so candlelight or moonlight? Candlelight. Planner or make it up as you go? Planner. Go all day or I need a nap? I need a nap. <laughs> There's no shame in needing some sleep, my friend. So when you're chatting, is it pecan or pecan? Pecan. Okay. When you meet somebody, what do you notice first? Their eyes or their smile? Ah, oh, that's hard. Because I always used to say their eyes, but now I think it's the smile. <laughs> really? Hey, I guess with age comes wisdom. I don't know, girl. <laughs> Are you a words of affirmation person or an acts of service kind of person? Hmm, that was hard too. I do both. So okay. I think words of affirmation. That's not a bad thing. And finally, what would you tell your younger self now? Don't be scared to go for it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Imagine if you had told your younger self that then you would have 35,000 books. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, I always appreciate it, but that's it for this time. And we'll see you next time on Extra.